um kings and queens so i i'm coming today live very very late because i have been very very busy today but more than anything i have been feeling kind of ill however i'm live now so i'm going to open in prayer i won't take much of your time today because i'm wearing my pjs about to get some great great peaceful rest in the name of jesus so um i pray that i find you getting ready to get some rest or maybe i'll find you in the morning because maybe you're already asleep which praise god you've getting to bed on time or getting rest um so father in the name of jesus i pray that you have your way lord we thank you, Father, for life today. We thank you for us to have a comfy bed for us to get some rest into. Maybe thank you as well, Father, for our homes. And just thank you for your presence today. Thank you for everything that you bless us with that even we may take for granted. So I just thank you for knowledge, revelation, insight, and clarity, Father, that you give us this great, great peace that only you can give us, that we get fulfilled rest, that we get rest, that we really, really are resting our minds and our souls and our spirits, and that um, any forces of darkness or evil, that they are pushed back, any nightmares, maybe some of us go to sleep and sometimes we're tormented in our dreams. So I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that you are covered by the blood of Jesus in your mind, in your spirit, in your heart, in your mouth, in your brain, and everywhere, that as you lay your head down tonight, and maybe if I don't find you getting rest in your comfy bed, that um, the Lord will provide abundantly this year for you to have a comfy bed, to have a home you own, to have some debt-free living in this life in Jesus' name. So I pray that the Lord delivers great knowledge, revelation, insight, and clarity for you to get some rest. Maybe he's going to give you some dreams that will give you revelations, clarity, insight, um, and knowledge and wisdom beyond your years of age. So Lord, have your way tonight. We honor you, Lord. And we just thank you, Father, for giving us great hope in you and covering us. And you just may we sleep with your presence tonight in Jesus' name. And today we are reading from Ecclesi Ecclesiastes uh, 1 through 5, which reads, The sun also rises and the sun goes down, period. Amen. So for you to know that whatever it is that you went to sleep thinking, the sun will rise in the morning. And I pray that whatever it is that's been haunting you, if it's fearful, that the Lord clears it up in the name of Jesus, that you have more faith then you do any fear in Jesus name. Have your way, Lord. And today this, the title is the sun also rises. Let me begin. Father, have your way. Ernest Hemingway's full first full length novel features hard drinking friends who've recently injured world 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 war one. They bear the literal and figurative figurative scars of the war's devastation and try to cope with it via parties, grand adventures and sleeping around. Always there is alcohol to numb the pain. No one is happy. Mm, amen. I've been there. Hemingway's title for his book, The Sun Also Rises, comes straight from the pages of Ecclesi 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 Bring It Holy Spirit, Ecclesiastes. In Ecclesiastes, King Solomon refers to himself as the teacher. He observes everything is meaningless. He observes everything is meaningless and asks, what do people gain from their labors? Solomon saw how the sun rises and sets. The wind blows to and fro. The rivers flow endlessly into a never satisfied sea. Ultimately, all is forgotten. Both Hemingway and Ecclesiastes confront us with the stark futility of living for this life only. Solomon, however, weaves bright hints of the divine, of the divine into his book. There is per permanence, permanence and real hope. Ecclesiastes shows us that we are, that we truly are. But it also shows God as he is. Everything God does will endure forever, said Solomon. Amen. And therein lies our great hope. For God has given us the gift of his son, Jesus. Apart from God, we're adrift in an endless, never satisfied sea. Mm, amen. Through his risen son, Jesus, we're reconciled to him and we discover our meaning, value, and purpose. Oof, amen. And today's Reflect and Pray questions are, what occupies your time and what meaning does it hold? What occupies my time, if I'm going to be completely honest, at times is sometimes, especially in this season, is worry. Um, sometimes it occupies my time, but when I have worry, it's also a reminder of, uh, am I going to feed my worry, which is feed my fear and continue to worry? Or am I going to feed my faith? So therefore, whatever it is that is trying to occupy more of my time, um, I can feed it with things that are going to add to my fear. How do I do that? Um, I prioritize my time with God. And it seems like every time a worry wants to pop into my head, I seriously, um, I just, I'm like, okay, well, if worry wants to live there, let me fill it with a solution. And what is the solution to my worries, which is God. It's occupying 
Uh, I'm not going to allow fear or worry occupy or rent space in my mind. I'm going to have to feed it with faith. And what does that look like? And that means like getting my worship on right where I am about to worry about, I'm going to change it to worship instead of worrying and being like, okay, what if this happens? I'm going to be like, you know what, Lord, I'm going to worship you right where I am. Because I know that whatever it is that's trying to put fear or worry into me, it's going to occupy space in my brain. And therefore, it's going to occupy space that I really don't have time in my life to be worrying about things. I'm going to have to replace it with worship. And that's going to thank God that whatever the solution is trying to uh, birth in me negatively, the Lord is going to use it positively to add to my life, to benefit my life. But only if I'm going to honor him in my worry, which is I'm going to change that. I'm going to exchange that with worship. And that's where I do an exchange as I always pray for us to have an exchange right now with the Holy Spirit. I want to have not an exchange, but a coexistment, a coexistment with the spirit. So therefore, whatever is trying to occupy my time or my mind, because whatever occupies your time, it's already occupied your mind because first it's in here and then you put into action where you're going to do things and why you're going to do things. So you're either going to do things because you're going to worry or you're going to do things because you're going to worship. So that's what I do. And what meaning does that hold? It holds great meaning in my life because what occupies in here is going to going it's going to direct my life so if i'm going to worry then that's going to occupy time and space that really doesn't do anything however worshiping god and praying about things is what i do when worry or fear or concerned or any anything that comes into my brain or my heart that tries to come into there i'm not going to let it take root i'm going to pray about it and the lord is going to direct me and instruct me divinely instruct me on what to ponder my thoughts on what to what I need to read, what I need to hear. So therefore, it can drown out whatever fear or worry is trying to come into my head. I pray that that blesses you. Because the meaning that it holds is significant. If, you can, if you're going to concentrate or allow worry and fear to occupy your mind. Because I tell you, do I go to sleep with worries? Yes, I do. But I pray and I leave it to the Lord to, to guide me and instruct me as to what I need to do next. What I need to read his word. Why do I need to read his word? Because those are his promises. That is my reminder daily. That he's with me. And there's instruction and there's divine instruction. If you read your Bible, you'll find out. The second question is, how might you change your priorities to follow Jesus? Well, that's what I was talking about right now. How do I change my priorities to follow Jesus? Uh, here's a very good example. My time with y'all and my time with um, the daily devotionals, it really delivers me. And it gives me, I guess it gives me a hope. But it also gives me like this responsibility that I have that I need to go live. And why is that? Is because... When I go live, it delivers a word to me. There's words that when I read by myself that there's a word delivered to me. But when I read the devotionals with the others, like a word delivered to me. And also, I hold myself accountable where I need to go live because it's not for me. It's the things that I do for the Lord as well. It's what God has called me to do. So how might you change your priorities to follow Jesus? Uh, prioritizing God and making sure that I do what he asks of me, even when I don't feel like it or maybe I don't feel up to it. But lately... Uh, even though I don't feel well, even if I'm exhausted, I have to come live as I did right now. It's 11 o'clock at night and I'm going live because I have to, because this is how I follow the Lord. This is how I follow Jesus. And this is how I'm obedient to what he calls me to do, no matter what I might have. This truly helps me conquer my fears. It reminds me and it just reminds me that speaking of God and reading his word, it's truly a gift. And um, I just pray that these devotionals are a gift to you and that they bless you. And um, ask yourself, how might you change your priorities to follow Jesus? Maybe it's going to church on Sundays. Maybe it's going to church on Saturdays. There's churches that have, there's a, CBC has church on Saturday evenings at 5 p.m. And then there's about four services on Sunday, three to four services on Sunday, which is 8, uh, 8 10, 12, and 2, I believe. So maybe you need to take time to change your priorities. So therefore you can follow Jesus. And if you want change and involvement in your life, there has to be some change in your priorities and in your scheduling. Whatever you make priority, whatever you hold dear to your heart, um, whatever you make priority, look at your bank accounts. Where all your money goes, that's pretty much a priority in your life. So I pray that you take that and that the Lord gives you great revelation on where and what you need to do that occupies your time, what you need to change, what you need to replace. And that you replace more of Jesus with whatever it is because that's where you exchange things. It's like if you're going to worry, I'm going to change it to worship. What are you worshiping? You're worshiping alcohol? Is it numbing your pain? Are you worshiping going out at night because it reassures you of some area that you need reassurances? Um, the only reason I bring up those topics is because I used to be there. 
and what i'm realizing now it's like this new year's i spent this new year in prayer with my family um when it stroke midnight and um i just wanted to be with the holy spirit and bring the holy spirit in with me in the beginning of the year so it's something new that i did but i just i'm thankful that my family was in agreement with it and um that we got to experience that it was seriously an involvement and a change but it also reminds me that that was going to occupy my time at the exact moment of midnight and that was going to i guess example to me that i want jesus in every celebration in every heartache in every trial in every confusion in every worry in every fear i want the holy spirit there because i'm gonna feel things but it doesn't mean that i have to say there resonate those with my with my identity they're just feelings they pass so i pray that, that blesses you and tonight's prayer is loving father help us to find fulfillment in you help us father that we find fulfillment in you all about you and in areas where we have to change the the priorities we have to change things that occupy our time and that we find true joy and fulfillment in you and the things that you want for our life and the things that you want us to change and evolve from thank you father for giving us that revelation insight and clarity on where we need to get fulfillment in you and how and what we have to do to continue multiplying our fulfillment in you so in jesus name i pray that you have your way lord and that we get great rest and i pray for people that are in the hospitals i pray for people that are in the jails the prisons i pray for people that are homeless i pray that they get comfort and great uh, that they get great comfort in their discomfort and maybe us maybe we're at home but maybe we're in a prison mentally maybe the the scheduling and the priorities that we've been having have us in this mental prison because many of us may be in a home many of us may have a family but we're in a mental prison that we need to be freed and delivered from so i just pray that whatever whatever area that you have this discomfort in that god gives you a comfort that only his presence can give his presence can give you so therefore you can break free or break that stronghold or break that addiction with the power of uh, jesus christ so whatever it is may the lord reveal it to you I'm in prayers for you. I'm in agreement with you. And I pray that this prayer blesses your life. Loving Father, help us to find true fulfillment in you. Help me to find true fulfillment in you, Lord. And if you don't have a relationship with the Lord, I pray that you repeat after me. Um, Father, in the name of Jesus, help us. Uh, well, forgive us. Lord. Thank you for forgiving us of our sins. Save us from ourselves. We want to live for you. And we want to have true fulfillment in you. Be the Lord over our lives. In Jesus' name, have your way, Lord. We honor you and we thank you in the Jesus mighty name. Amen. I pray that that prayer blesses you and I pray that you find a Bible based church where you can grow and uh, educate and get the community of believers that you need to be around. So therefore you can be encouraged because relationships are one of the greatest wealth, the forms of wealth that the Lord, <clears throat> excuse me, blesses us with. So rest well. I pray that you have great peace, protection and um, prosperity even as you list you rest your head tonight. God bless y'all and remember that God is at work. You're a king or queen. Rain responsibly, sleep responsibly. <coughs> Excuse me. And I pray that you get rest, rest well responsibly. And that means clear your mind, give your worries to the Lord, and uh, just praise and worship Him. And whatever you're going through, this too shall pass. God bless. Good night.